Alright everyone, this topic has been requested for quite some time because everyone was curious if the Xeon Crane 3S in fact works well with the C300 Mark III as well as the C500 Mark II. So we did some testing with both of these cameras as well as our Pocket 6K and the results are in and I will talk about all of the things that I do like about the Crane 3S and things that are not working perfectly well in this video after the end. So before we actually start the review, I would love for you to subscribe to our channel right now because it really helps the channel grow. And if you want to, you can also follow us on Instagram because we give constant feedback and updates in our Instagram stories on new equipment. And we also did so on the Crane 3S when testing it out with the C300 Mark III as well as the C500 Mark II. But now let's get into our first topic and that is the build and the design quality. When it comes to the design, not much has changed from the previous model, the Crane 3 Lab. It now is a little bit bigger as well as a bit heavier. The Crane 3S comes in at 2.5 kilograms, whereas the Crane 3 Lab only weighs 1.9 kilograms. That 600 gram difference might not actually sound like a lot to you, but considering that the Crane 3S is actually meant for heavier setups and bigger cameras, that actually adds up. And this is probably one of the things that I don't like about the gimbal is the weight overall, but I will talk about this in a later section of the video. Other than a change in the color scheme, from red to golden, not much has changed. There are only really subtle changes, but they can actually make a big difference. The first change is that we now have a DC import, and that actually allows you to power your gimbal via an external battery pack that you can purchase additionally. We didn't have the chance to actually test this out, so we didn't ever use this because our setup wasn't as heavy, so we didn't really need it. Unfortunately, that newly added DC import replaces one of the quarter inch screws on the side. And since this gimbal already lacks a lot of mounting options, that is kind of a bummer. The second big change, and that is a very welcome one, is that you can now replace the grip handle and just either leave it off or just replace it by any kind of other handle that you're choosing to and this is kind of a big deal because when using the Crane 3S with a dual handle setup or mounting it to a car this handle on the back side of the gimbal is actually kind of in the way and we tried using it with the DH04 which is kind of a 5XC stabilizer and it just really was in the way all the time and in the future we're actually trying to get a ring setup for the Crane 3S and it's currently in the mail so subscribe if you want to see that because I'm kind of excited about that and now the option to actually detach the handle gives us a lot more free room and since we don't really need the back handle and all the options anyway when having a dual handle or a ring setup anyway this is a really welcome addition to the design of the Crane 3S. Overall when it comes to the unique design of the Crane 3S a lot of people like it and some don't. I'm not really sure if I do like it. Bell actually loves it and I would much rather have a dual handle or a ring setup. But now with the detachable backside, it's actually possible to get both of these setups. Which was already a really big selling point of the Crane 3 Lab, the Weebill and the Weebill S, is the quick ability to go into underslung mode with the Crane 3S and its unique design. And this is still there and I really love this. So if you find yourself using the underslung mode and really trying to get a lot of low angle shots, the Crane 3S design is really perfect for you. I already touched briefly on it and that is the missing mounting options and that is probably the biggest problem with the design of the Crane 3S. Because if you want to mount an additional monitor, it's really hard to do so. Especially since this gimbal is made for cinema cameras, which typically don't have an integrated LCD screen, you need to find a way to actually mount your LCD screen somewhere to the gimbal. And with its unique design to go into underslung mode, that changes the angle of the gimbal so much that it really becomes hard to mount a screen that you can use in your regular mode as well as in the underslung mode. After trying countless different mount systems to actually get a monitor as well as a microphone added to the Crane 3S, I found a piece of equipment from Smallrig that I really like and I think this is the best way to mount a monitor or a microphone to your Crane 3S. 
It attaches to the side of your gimbal via a quarter inch screw. And on the bottom you can mount your monitor and you have a flexible monitor mount. And on top you have a cold shoe you can use to mount additional accessories or a microphone. And this way you can actually see your monitor when in regular mode and then when switching to under slung mode you can easily just rotate the monitor to actually fit your field of view. And again this is not perfect because it sometimes gets in the way when shooting and I also don't like that you kind of have to look down but that has also been the way on Steadicams forever and I would much rather have a monitor in my natural field of view so I can see where I'm going but overall this has definitely been the best option for me that I have used on the Crane 3 or the Crane 3S and I can totally recommend it and I put a link in the description below if you want to get one. The last minor change is the different base plate and I really do like the new base plate because it's just a regular Manfrotto sized base plate that you can put on the bottom of your camera but you do have an additional option to actually put 15 millimeter rods on top of it and there you can have a lens mount or you can actually use it to attach a follow focus or a zoom focus but you don't have to and that is a really smart design and for me in our C300 Mark III the base plate basically just is attached to our camera at all times and I usually use it as a tripod plate and whenever I want to mount my camera to the gimbal I just have the base plate already on my camera so I really do like the new base plate. All right, moving on to mounting and balancing your C300 or C500 Mark II onto the Crane 3S. In our very first test, we used the Canon 24mm 1.4 prime lens, which was our go-to lens for gimbal work on the C200 in the past. And although this setup did work, it wasn't really perfect because you had really limited headspace to the back of the gimbal. And when using an SDI cable, even though it was 90 degree angled, in certain movements, you actually did hit the cable and just introduced shutter when going from the regular mode to the low mode. So overall, it really wasn't the best experience in the beginning. So we put a pin to it and actually tried it with the 16 to 35 later. And trying to get the 16 to 35 on there was actually not possible because you had to move the camera to the back so much that you didn't really have enough headroom for your cables, maybe HDMI or SDI. But luckily the Crane 3S actually comes with an extension plate. So you can extend the axis so that you have so much more room to actually fit all your cables. You can actually mount a monitor on top of your camera and still have enough headroom to go into underslung mode. But here we ran into some minor problems. We took the gimbal to a job in Italy and we wanted to use it over there. And I brought the base plate with me, hoping that I could just easily change it if I needed to. And I did and I followed all the instructions. And of course the cable wasn't long enough. So you kind of need to tuck on the table to get it to fit the newer design and the extension plate. Unfortunately, even though I was really careful, I kind of ripped on it too hard and the detach the cable from some kind of motor inside of the gimbal. So after attaching the extension arm, I get some error messages that I needed to upgrade the gimbal and I couldn't and I didn't know what to do. So I actually called the support and they were really helpful and they told me that I needed to detach some other things, but unfortunately I didn't have all the screwdrivers with me, so I couldn't do it and I really couldn't use my gimbal on location. Of course, this was kind of my own fault, but the overall experience of attaching this uh, new extension arm wasn't really the best. And in the Xeon Crane 3S forum on Facebook, there were a lot of people that had the same issues. So I feel like there has to be some better design choices so that you don't rip out the cable so easily. But anyway, after attaching the cable again, everything works perfectly fine. And I do like the design and it does come with a little rubber thingy that you can put on top of the cables and the design looks really nice. And now this is the way that I have set up my gimbal and it will just stay like this forever. So now having this extension arm, you have so much more headroom. So mounting the Canon 16-35 to 2.8 version 3 was absolutely no problem. And we had enough space for our SDI cable or an HDMI cable. And like I already said, you could have even mounted a monitor on top of the camera if it's not a seven inch and you could still use it in underslump. 
I actually tried mounting the camera onto the gimbal with a lot of accessories like a monitor or the side grip, but unfortunately I wasn't really able to balance it well without it powering on. Maybe the motors are strong enough to actually balance this out, but I decided to rig the camera down and got rid of the monitor as well as the side grip and just have the camera in its bare form and just use an external monitor attached to the gimbal like I already showed you in the beginning of the video. So now that we actually found our setup and mounted everything, including the lens holder, let's talk about how smooth the footage actually was. And here I was really pleasantly surprised because the footage looks really smooth. And I was trying it in the beginning when I was trying to film my friend dancing, but I had problems with the autofocus and the overall experience wasn't as great, but I also didn't have the extension plate on the gimbal. But now that I had the extension plate, I had absolutely no problem getting smooth footage. When using it in a follow mode as well as the pan follow mode, you got like really smooth footage. I was doing some tilt reveals and just the way I would usually just follow someone on a 35 millimeter on a crop sensor, I got really smooth footage. And that way I can totally use this gimbal and I had absolutely no problem getting really smooth footage out of it. So this is definitely a great option for a camera like the C300 or the C500 Mark II. And the interesting part here was that you have five different motor strength options and we were only on the second lowest. So there's definitely a lot of headroom for even bigger setups. But my friend told me that when you exceed the three kilogram mark on your setup, you definitely need the additional battery pack because the motor does get stronger. So not only do you extend your battery life, but also does it give you a little bit more power to your motors when having a bigger setup. Our setup weighs a little less than three kilograms or is pretty much on the edge. So I didn't really need the external battery pack and I was fine by just using the gimbal on its own. So is this the perfect gimbal and can you get very smooth footage out of it? Yes and no. The biggest problem with this gimbal is just the sheer weight. I consider myself well above average when it comes to strength and overall fitness. And even I did have some problems with using this gimbal for longer periods of time. You really have to concentrate on tugging your arms in so you actually have most of the weight really on your torso instead of just extending your arms and having it on your shoulders and your arms. But on the other hand, Belle, who is also well above average when it comes to strength and fitness in her weight class, she tried to use the gimbal on the ice for a shoot in Italy and she ditched the gimbal before I could even start shooting some b-roll of it because it was just way too heavy. And she was just not able to get smooth footage out of the gimbal because the overall setup of the C300 with the external monitor as well as the Crane 3S was just way too heavy for her to actually use it. So that is one one thing that you do have to keep in mind. The entire setup is pretty heavy. So if you want to use this for longer periods of time, this might not be the perfect setup without having something like an easy rig or something that takes off the weight of the entire setup because this setup is heavy. And yes, you can use it, but you will get tired after a decent amount of time. So this is definitely not the setup that you can just run and gunning on an entire day of a wedding shoot. So this is something you do have to keep in mind. So yes, the overall weight of the setup is definitely the biggest downside of the Crane 3S combined with a camera like the C300. It's not really the gimbal's fault, because if you look at the competition, which is probably the Ronin 2 or a Movi Pro, those gimbals are even bigger and way heavier and probably can't be used without any kind of easy rig for any kind of longer period of time. So the Crane 3S is actually the lightest out of the bunch that are approved for a camera like the Canon C300 or C500 Mark II. With its overall design, it is quite hard to attach it to something like an easy rig. Again, we are getting a ring pretty soon, so that way we can actually attach it to an easy rig if you wanted to. So subscribe if you want to see that video in the near future. But overall, as it stands right now, this is the biggest thing you have to be aware of 
this setup is really heavy even if you're somewhat on the stronger side. What I do like about the Crane 3S though that for a camera like a C300 or even bigger cameras it's still a really small footprint and with the option of locking the axis you can actually attach it to your backpack and that's what I do 99% of the times. I just attach it to the back of my backpack and that way I have a complete cinema camera with two DSLM bodies, lots of lenses, two monitors as well as a full-fledged gimbal in just one backpack. And that is usually the setup that I use for most of the shoots. And that is really cool to have, that I don't need an additional heavy box like a Ronin 2 or even the original Ronin to carry around even when going on an airplane. So having this small of a footprint and that strength of the motors that actually support my bigger cinema camera rigs is actually amazing. So overall, would I recommend the Crane 3S with our C300 Mark III? Definitely yes. I did have some problems in the beginning, but with using the extension arm and finding the right setup, I evened all of them out and I got really smooth footage. Also, the newest firmware 1.8 with the auto-tune function also helped probably get rid of micro jitters. I didn't really experience any of those in the past, but I had some friends tell me that they did get some micro jitters, but with the setup that I did with the stripped down version as well as the external monitors, I had no problems at all and I got really smooth footage out of it. Considering that the alternative is a much larger, heavier and 10 times more expensive gimbal like the Ronin 2, I do love that we do have an option like the Crane 3S that I can just attach to my backpack and take anywhere. Granted, I shoot handheld 90% of the times, but for the 10% of the times that I do need a gimbal, I think the Crane 3S is definitely a great option. Again, it's on the heavier side, and I'm not talking about the gimbal itself, but the overall setup. So something you have to keep in mind when you want to use gimbals for an extended period of time. But overall, as it stands right now, out of all the gimbals right now, for my kind of shooting, the Crane 3S is my favorite when pairing it with the C300 Mark III or even the C500 Mark II. So this is it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you like this video. And if you did actually like the video, subscribe to our channel for more. And I will see you in the next one. Done.